Hello my friends, welcome back to another video and another q and I haven't done one of these in a long time, a very long time, a couple years. But this is to celebrate my five year YouTube anniversary. I uploaded my first video August 29th, 2017 and it's 2022 and this is crazy that it's been five years. It does not seem like it's been five years. But I did post a video a week or so ago asking you if you had any questions, if you'd like me to do an updated Q&A because I'm always getting new subscribers. Sorry, <laughs> Marion's right in there. Um, you know how it's going to be. The dog's barking, the noises. It's real life, but it always is around here. So, uh, But I also posted on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram at Dorset Doorstep. If you don't already, um, I just put a little post over there to ask for some questions if you didn't see this video and I did get some questions so yesterday I went through them all and kind of like wrote them down hopefully this will not run on and on too long okay sorry Marion was in the shower and yeah too many noises so he's downstairs now but I do have my dogs in here so you know you'll probably hear them also I have to sit in front of the window for the lighting but it reflects on my glasses but I can't see without them so I apologize for the glare but yeah, I could look like that the whole time, I guess. <laughs> but anyway, thank you just so much for all of you that submitted a question. A lot of you just gave me such sweet comments about congratulating me about five years and how you love my channel. And I just wanted to say a massive thank you to all of you all who have, new and old, who have supported my channel and my family and just come along and gotten to know all of us and you know we're, we've become like friends and i really do consider y'all my friends even though we've never met and we will never meet but one day in heaven hopefully we'll meet um so i just wanted to say a heartfelt thank you to you all because literally i wouldn't have a channel if i didn't have viewers and so having you all come keep coming back and commenting and i know that i i don't have a lot of time to respond to comments but i definitely read them and respond if i'm able to but when i give you a heart like please don't think that it wasn't important or that it didn't mean a lot to me or that i didn't love your comment if i give you a heart that means i read it and i appreciate it and um yeah like don't think that i didn't appreciate it because i don't respond to you but uh, hopefully in my videos i can convey to you that i do read them and so so greatly appreciate them so i just wanted to start out by saying thank you so 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 much for sticking with me even if you're new if you've just come and joined uh my youtube family or my family of viewers like it is so special to me and i just fully understand that i would not be in this position if it wasn't for my viewers so thank you thank you thank you i'm just going to jump in and start answering some are going to be quick some won't be so quick someone asked me what would my what will my grandma name be and as you know my uh oldest is going to him and his wife are going to have a baby in February. Someone asked when the due date was also. And the due date is actually on Marion's birthday in February. But, you know, first babies generally tend to be late. So around Valentine's Day is when we're looking for baby girl Dorset to arrive. And my grandma name is going to be Nani, N-O-N-I. And Marion will be Poppy, P-O-P-I. And we came up with those names. I came up with those names because basically Danielle and Michael both have, you know, a lot of different names already in the family. And so, you know, we couldn't pick from those names. So we could just be grandma and grandpa. And we were just tossing back and forth, like, what do we want to be called? And then I had seen someone online that used that those two names. And I said, it just jumped out at me. And I was like, that's what we need to be because they, they were not taken. So Nani and Poppy is what we became. Hopefully we'll be Nani and Poppy too. Lots and lots of grandbabies. Someone asked, is Madison near an engagement? that her boyfriend seems like a great guy and he his name is jordan he is an amazing guy um i'm not going to say they're near engagement they've only been dating for four months but we believe that dating is for the purpose of marriage in the future so um, they are working towards that that is obviously the goal so you know whenever that happens it happens but mary and i only dated for four months before we got engaged but looking back that was kind of fast. I mean, here we are 20, almost 27 years married and it worked out for us. So, <laughs> but they are in love and uh, yeah, their relationship is progressing. So we shall see if there's a wedding in our future. <laughs> right, so somebody asked, how did Marion and I meet? Um, Marion and I met when I moved up here from Texas, when Patrick had his accident 
and Marion and I met at, he was, my younger brother Joe had gotten a job at the church and Marion was his boss. And when we moved into our first little apartment, Joe and I, uh, we needed a truck. Marion had a truck. He helped us move. He was young. I was young. You know, it was just, it was a different time in our life and we were just hanging out and he was like, you know, he just came over and hung out a lot. And someone asked, did I know that he would be my husband or were we just friends at first? And I definitely have to say that we were just friends at first. Um, and it was a few months after we met that we started dating. And like I said, we only dated four months and then we were only engaged for seven. So we were married in less than a year from the time we started dating to when we got married. We were just like both ready and we knew it and we didn't want to wait. We were 21, so we were really young. But here we are and it worked out what would i do different if my children were still at home i i have had my children at home so i know what that's like and it was amazing and years that i will always hold deep in my heart they are so special to me um i was it was very chaotic it was very exhausting when my children were home um if my children lived at home today and i was like doing youtube you know I guess it would be different content um it would just be a lot more hectic and so as far as like doing anything different i don't know that i do anything different i've been there and i've done that and i enjoyed it thoroughly i was meant to be a mom i loved everything about it i still love everything about it i still have jackson at home um but it is vastly different having one as opposed to having four and jackson's a teenager now so it's like calmed down he was like my wild child doing parkour off the furniture when he was one definitely things have calmed down but we're gonna have grandbabies and there's gonna be chaos again so but i guess as far as what i would do different i wouldn't do anything different you know just take each stage as it comes and i enjoy each stage and i know that there's still you know the best is yet to come even though we're sad that like our kids are growing up and we don't have that anymore i know that there's still so much fun to be had and joy and it's gonna be awesome so a couple of you asked if this is our forever home um, or if we would move to a new home if the right deal came along. And it's funny, when I read that, I thought, well, no, this is definitely not my forever home. My forever home is in heaven. My mansion in heaven is my forever home. So this is just my temporary home, a uh, very temporary home. I know what you mean. We've lived here for 18 years, and um, as of right now, I would say we don't have any plans to move. There's no need for us to move. And of course, you know, the Bible talks about many are the plans in a man's or a woman's heart, but it's the Lord's will that prevails. So whatever God has in store, you know, we just, we'll, we'll see if he leads us to another, you know, on another path. But for right now, this is where we are. We're very happy here. Um, so if the right deal came along, I cannot say that we would just jump on it. It's, it's not something that is on our radar. But the only thing that I have to consider is my mom, and she's gonna be 70 next year. And she has MS, so because of that, she needs a lot of assistance in a lot of areas. And it would be possible that one day she may need to live with me. Um, so whatever that it looks like, you know, if it meant I needed to sell my home and she sold hers and we bought one together, or she needed to move in with me or I needed to move in with her, like I don't know what that looks like. I just always have that kind of in the back of my mind as something maybe God's just kind of preparing me for like what's gonna happen I don't know but you know that, that that would be the only thing I could see of course if all my kids moved away I can't say I wouldn't sell my home and you know just move to be closer to them all right so I had a couple questions regarding Michael's biological mom Michael is my stepson um, said how old was Michael when we met and got married how did or did he live with us throughout his childhood is his birth mom a part of his life did she pass away at a young age all those things and marion and I, I met when michael was just just barely one and then we married when he was just barely two so i've obviously been in his life since almost the very beginning and we uh all helped to raise michael but as far as like his mom and talking about any of that um out of just respect for everyone involved that I won't comment on that because that isn't my story to tell you know but uh, Michael was raised by all of us um, baby names do Michael and Danielle have a name picked out so they do have a name that they have shared with us 
and I think it's a pretty strong possibility, but it's not set in stone. So if, you know, if and when I'm able to share, I will. But um, yeah, they've shared a name with us that they're strongly considering, I think. Okay, so a couple of you asked me to like give an update on my weight loss um, and any like long-term plans. So if you watched the video, I'll try to remember to link it down below when I uh, initially made a video about how I had lost 30 pounds. Basically I had to make a lot of changes because my blood work. Um, so my initial goal was to lose 30 pounds and last October I reached that goal and since October till now which is September I have found kind of like my kind of like where where I'm comfortable and where is like realistically I should and can be. So since I reached my goal, my goal was to get to 135 and I reached that goal and then I got even lower than that. And then since then I, I basically stay like, I try to stay in the 130s. So like 139, 140, 141, that's about right where I stay, give or take, you know, whatever day I'm weighing myself. But uh, that's that's gonna try to that's gonna be my long-term goal is to try and keep it around that but I did recently go to my gynecologist and she was like you know when you get to be about 52 and you're post menopause you start to like gain weight and all this and your metabolism changes and but at least I try to get a handle on it before I get to that and then maybe that will help me in the long run so definitely these like changes that I've made trying to cut out like the added sugars and stuff have definitely for me benefited me greatly and hopefully over time will continue to but i'm i'm still i, I just kind of had to like figure out what's a happy medium for me for my body type for my lifestyle and yeah so that's that's where i'm at i'm like try to i try to keep it under one my weight under 140 but it's more about my blood work um and how that you know my health how that reflected what I'm doing and it definitely did when I went I just went back in August so I went to all my doctors in August and everything looked good so so then someone said tips on eating less portions and cutting back on sugar um for the long haul and has using the Fitbit helped out and you were, I think you were saying something about how it's so hard to make that commitment and it is so hard especially when you're addicted to sugar um so eating less portions, what I do is I get my food and I put it on my plate and I always try to put less than I want and I'll eat it and then I immediately want to go back and get seconds because it's what I always did before. If I want more, I just go get more. But now I just stop myself from getting seconds because usually if you go back right away, you're going to want it. But if you wait, if you hold off, and I try to wait like a half an hour. If I'm still really wanting it in a half hour, then I'll maybe get a little bit more. But nine times out of ten, I don't want it. I've forgotten about it so that's what I try to do is, as a general rule like don't go get the seconds just hold on just hold on and usually that craving will subside and also I eat slowly I have always been like a super fast eater and I've had to learn to slow down and eat slower take smaller bites and then you feel fuller I think than when you when you eat it all then you're like I just need more so it does help cut down on portion control and then cutting back on sugar you know I've shared in that video I shared all kinds of like sugar free or low sugar options that can that really satisfy your desire your craving for sugar and just have to make it a lifestyle like it's not a temporary thing it's a lifestyle for the rest of my life I don't I've, I've had to do like a 180 where I look at things in the grocery store that I want to buy or that I would have bought before, you know, I, I try to make better choices and not buy those things. Like I'll never just go in and buy those things like I did before. Never. So, but I still definitely have treats and I definitely have sugar and I have, you know, special occasions when I want to have just normal stuff. But what I do is I don't, as I pretty much eat everything I did before, except I eat smaller portions. And then as far as like the sugars, the, the added sugars, the desserts, I don't eat that, but I do find substitutes that still make me feel satisfied for my craving for sugar. Then you asked about the Fitbit. Yeah, Elena got me, Elena and Andrew got me this Fitbit for Christmas and I love it because it, it just something I never had before. I never was able to keep track of my steps or my heart rate or 
anything like that so it is definitely helpful I definitely recommend getting one of these uh, just it just like educates you like oh I'm so close to 10,000 I should I should go for a walk or I'm gonna get my heart pumping I want to see what my Fitbit says you know for the next 30 minutes like when I'm cleaning the house I can look back and see oh yeah that was a good cardio <laughs> workout so yeah it's definitely a good thing to have I enjoy having mine someone asked how I edit videos I edit using a software called Wondershare Filmora, super easy to use, user-friendly, inexpensive. I've been using it for five years and they update it constantly. It's just online, you can find it. When I got it, it was $60, so I don't know what it is now, but it was very, fairly inexpensive compared to some of the others. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles, so but it has enough to, to edit videos, so yeah. There's a few things I wish I had that I don't that would make my videos better, but I'm not willing to spend like $1,000 on an editing program, so. Someone asked me if I was doing Vlogmas this year, and my plan is to do Vlogtober and also the 12 days of Vlogmas, just like I did last year, so it would be 12 days leading up to Christmas, and then Monday through Friday in October, I will be doing Vlogtober, and they'll be shorter videos. They won't be like these 30-minute videos. It'll be like 10 to 15 minute, just daily check-in, you know, vlogs. So yes, I do plan on it, you know, God willing, everything works out. It's a lot of work, especially vlog, Vlogmas when I have family visiting and I'm going to have family here for like over a month and so it's just going to be a commitment, but I enjoy it and I love to look back on them. So, and I know so many of you say that you look forward to it every day, so I love it. Do I recommend mixing, Some one of you said that you would like start a YouTube channel and you did some DIYs and you want to know if I recommend adding vlogs in with DIYs in the same video. And here's what I say on that. I say do what makes you happy. And I stand by that. <laughs> I've never, ever, ever worried really about the algorithm or are they going to push my videos out. I just want to enjoy what I'm doing. And so my channel has not grown as much as some uh, in some areas. I'm coming up on, on 50,000 subscribers pretty soon and it's been five years. So um, for me though, like it's about the joy in doing what I do. And so if I had to worry about, oh, I can't put that in my video because YouTube might punish me for it or you know, I just can't worry about that. If it, if it's, I just tried to find where I fit in. I didn't necessarily, and, and it's probably <laughs> what everybody will tell you not to do. Like they say, to find your niche. Are you just a cleaning channel? Are you just a DIY channel? Are you just a haul channel? Mine is a homemaking channel. So that includes fixing up my home. That includes grocery hauls. That includes clothing hauls. That includes cleaning my house. That in includes cooking. It includes uh, family vacations it's just encompassing everything about homemaking and being a mom and a wife and my life so other people branch off and have like a separate cleaning channel or a separate DIY channel I've never felt the need to do that I just put it all in, in I put all my effort into my one channel into my videos and hopefully y'all can relate to that and so I say do what makes you happy I say if you're if you're doing it for fast growth and you know you want to get monetized and all that you you may be better off finding just like one particular niche that you're good at or that you like to share but for me i don't think that i would be full i know that i would not be like fulfilled and happy if i was just doing cleaning videos or like that's for me that's not what i want there's many successful channels out there who do that and that's what they choose so it's about what makes you happy you know do what you want to do do because otherwise if I wasn't happy doing this I would not be doing it after five years you have to put up with too much stuff to to do this for five years if you uh don't find joy in it and once you don't find joy in it anymore move on to something else if I didn't find joy in it I would move on so if I ever considered doing a room makeover on a family member's room as long as it was okay with them I I would I guess if they if they wanted me to if they needed me to i've thought about doing it at my mom's in a few places but it's also like a lot of work and a lot of money and a lot of time and yeah i don't know if i really necessarily have the time to put into it but i'm not opposed i guess i should say i'm not opposed to it what advice do i have for new youtubers my advice is always first of all if you've been thinking about 
doing it, do it. Like, just do it. You have to start somewhere. You have to jump in somewhere. I vlogged, I made like four weeks of vlogs before I posted my first one, and then I posted like a lot at once. And I remember posting the first one and being like, okay, there it is. I sent it out into the world, and now nobody's watching it. <laughs> it was like, oh, you have to like get people to come. You have to really work for it. You have to keep being consistent and keep posting and so i learned you know that you had to, that i had to keep doing that and so it's kind of discouraging it can be discouraging but you you just learn as you go and for me like my biggest piece of advice is if you are thinking about it and really thinking about it really wanting to go for it like give it a try if you don't give it a try you're never going to know and i've given that advice to people and they've tried it and they just couldn't do it it was too much of a commitment they couldn't do it and that and it's not for everyone so but if you really want to do it I would say give it a try just like anything else in life and it might work out it might not you might realize yeah I don't like it like I thought I would you may realize it's way too much work because let me tell you it's a lot of work however when you your channel gets big enough um, and you start you, you know you have more viewers it does become your job and so that um, is where you're able to put your time because it's your job so you're able to Patrick's texting me you're able to um, you know devote that time to it because it is your job and you are contributing to your family so if you're taking time away from your family to actually work on a video you know that you're contributing financially to your family so i also say be consistent you have to be consistent i started posting three videos a week um, from the time i started when i had nobody watching i still posted three videos every week kind of like a hustle at the beginning i mean not just at the beginning but you know eventually you start to find where you're comfortable and you get those viewers who just keep coming back and really just making it worth it making you want it they, they push you on to keep doing what you're doing and you know your channel grows and if God wants you to do it he's gonna bless it and it's gonna be you know it's gonna grow and always honor God with your videos I always say that if I don't point Jesus, people to Jesus through my videos, then literally my work is for nothing. There's no point in doing any of it. It doesn't have any lasting effects. So as long as you are honoring the Lord with your content, with, with what you're putting out there, then he will bless it and he will make it grow. And, you know, you'll probably do things you never thought you could do. So um, have I ever had to deal with negative comments or have I had to deal with them often? And obviously the answer to that would be a definitely <laughs> yes. You put yourself out there, but you got it. They say you put yourself out there. You've got to expect that, but that's not, I don't agree with that because like you just go to the grocery store and you put yourself out there. You don't expect people to walk up to you and be like, I can't believe you're wearing that today. I would never wear my makeup like that. I can't believe you chose that shirt or why don't you lose weight or why don't you wear a different foundation? You know, you, you don't expect that when you put yourself out there in real life. So just putting yourself out on the internet, it's not like an invitation for someone to attack you. So unfortunately that is the world we live in. That is, that's the way of the world. Um, so I, as a Christ follower, am called to be different. So whenever I get a negative comment, nine times out of 10, it's just a block and delete kind of thing. There are times when I have responded, when I have prayed about this, what do I say? What do I do in this situation? He always tells me to speak the truth in love. So if I'm speaking the truth and I'm doing it out of love, then I'm okay. If I'm not, I gotta get back to those basics because it's not gonna work out for me. And you know, it's not about winning an argument. It's not about putting someone in their place. It's not about having to defend myself. It's not about what they're saying is wrong. They're attacking me. It's just about like, is it worth it? Is it speaking truth in love? If it's not, like it's just not something that needs to be, you know, addressed. So it's super easy for me to just block and move on. It is. So my comment section is my comment section and it's going to be a place of, you know, uh, camaraderie, friendship, lifting people up. It's not going to be a place of negativity. It's not going to be a place of inappropriate talking. It's just not because that's my channel and I have the control over that. I can't say that they won't happen. People will still still do it all the time. There's definitely days I get discouraged. There's definitely days when it hurts my feelings, but it's so it's over so quick. And I just really refocus, refocus. God called me to do this. 
and I'm gonna do it. And my my skin's a lot thicker than I thought it was when I before I started YouTube. Um, so so let's see. Some some of y'all asked me about our pool. Like, would um would we ever put in an in-ground pool or like a, a more permanent above ground? And honestly, like Marion jokes about it all the time and has for years because of his back. He says a pool is so good for him, but um like that's so expensive so you know of course we would love an in-ground pool like that would be a dream if we ever bought a new house I would love a house with a pool because we all love to swim so much but um, as far as like putting one in I don't see that ever happening you know it's just so darn expensive um, and then like why don't we winterize our pool some people said that that's what they do and ours is just not it's just not big enough we've never done that we've always just drained it it literally cost us like twenty dollars to refill it at the beginning of the summer and then we just maintain that all summer and then we just take it down and i rather have it down and put away and not in my yard and getting moldy and all that and then exposed to the elements as you know we get lots of rain we get snow and ice and wind and i just rather it be put up and i know marion too and we, we have our pools for several years and we have to replace them. So it's just not something that we want permanently, you know, unless it was an in-ground pool. And then one of you said you had the same pool as we do and it broke after five years and you had to replace it. That um, is actually a long time to have your pool. So that's really good. Um, and then you asked about saltwater pools, like what's Marion's thoughts. Marion said, I asked him and he said he doesn't actually know enough about saltwater pools. He just, we had a friend who had one. He had bought a pool that was bigger than ours, but it was the same kind. And he trans transferred everything over to like a saltwater pump and filter and all that. And he, it kept his pool really clean and it was really easy to keep clean, but it started to like rust and corrode the parts, the metal parts. And so that's really like the only experience we've had with it but I'm, I've heard great things about salt water filters and all that like that they're so much easier but we've like figured out how to keep it clean now so you know we just will keep doing what we're doing probably so someone asked me how do I pick a pineapple um I have no idea how to pick a pineapple <laughs> if y'all know how let me know in the comments let us all know in the comments because I don't know fresh pineapple is my all-time favorite food and I never know how to pick it, honestly. I just pick one and usually it sits on my counter for a couple days and starts to look bad, so I have to eat it really quick. But I honestly don't know. But if anybody does, ooh, just got brighter. <laughs> if anybody does, let, let us all know. Someone said, past jobs that I've held. I, when I, my first job was at a daycare. I was in like the, I was in charge of the toddler room. So like the 12 to 24 months. They were my babies. I love that age. It's my all-time favorite. I also worked in the infant room, the birth to 12 months. I also worked in the two-year-old room, but I worked there for like nine months before Patrick had his accident, and then we moved up here, and then I worked at the hospital that they took him to when he had his wreck, and I worked there for 13 years. So I was, I was always in the radiology department, but it was different part different things that I did different jobs different shifts just but always within radiology so I did that and then I left that job when I wanted to have another baby and so that was like in 2007 and then I got pregnant with Jackson that same year and you know since then I've been a full-time stay-at-home mom but since Elena was a baby that was when I went to part-time and then I was able to fully quit when I wanted to I knew I wanted to have another baby and it was just financially it was like the best time for us to do it so that basically the, oh and I've had a few like temporary jobs in our transition from Texas up here I worked a few temporary jobs I did work at the church in the switchboard for a little while and that was when I was dating Mary and he worked up there too so that just worked out good we got to see each other and have dinner together and I think that's the only jobs I've ever had so someone asked me what, what are the TV shows that Madison and I watch so you know we love Dancing with the Stars, but it's, it's ever since Tom left, we're just we just loved him, and so it's kind of we don't love it so much anymore. And now, of course, this season it's on Disney Plus. We don't have Disney Plus, so I, yeah, we don't we won't watch that. But we do love to, to watch The Bachelor and The Bachelorette, but we like to watch it the day after, and we can fast forward. There's lots of scenes that need to be fast forwarded, as you know what I mean. Um, so we definitely are like, oh, hey, fast forward, fast forward, and then we can just watch the good parts. So we'll save up sometimes two or three episodes, and then we'll sit down and watch them all, but we just fast forward through the inappropriate stuff. But we love to follow, like, you know, the, they pick the bachelor from this 
the bachelorette and they pick the bachelorette from the bachelor you know it just keeps moving on so it just builds and builds and we've just watched it for years and we just you know there's a lot of inappropriateness on there so we, we fast forward that but someone said have i ever tried canning food or been around anyone who has and the answer to that is no <laughs> i do watch tiffany on our small town life she does a lot of you know homesteading and canning and things like that i watched her videos and it is super fascinating i just i don't know enough about it i would need like to take a class on it or something if i to feel confident enough to do that. But I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome. I just, I don't, like I said before, I don't know anything about gardening and all that. It's, um, someone said, do we live in a big city? We live in a mid-sized city, I would say. I'm, I'm from Austin, so that's a big city. So when I moved here, it was way small, but it's grown, you know, it's mid-sized. So someone said, if I could go anywhere in the world, where would it be? And interestingly enough, I would love, I've always wanted to go to Hawaii, first of all. And I've always wanted to go to like the UK. Um, I have, like, I love um, European history. is so much more fascinating to me than American history. And so I've read books on it and I've just read so much about it. I would love to go see like those actual places like the castles and just there's so much rich history. It would be fascinating to go to like the UK and yeah. That would probably be if I could pick anywhere. I know it's kind of generic, but <laughs> it's where I would go. And then someone said, have I ever traveled abroad and do I ever plan to come to the UK? I have never traveled abroad. The furthest I've been is Mexico and the Bahamas, but I would love to travel abroad. But Marion does not like to fly, so it would have to be without Marion. I don't know. I, I always say if I'm going to do something like that, I want it to be with him because we've experienced all our firsts together and I want to you know, when we flew to the Bahamas together and, uh, but he, he's a very, very nervous flyer. He'll do it, but he literally passed out on the plane last time he flew. <laughs> so it's not like easy for him. So I don't know if I'll ever get over there, but I would love to go. Um, someone said, have I been to Black Dog Salvage in Roanoke? And the answer is negative. I have not, never been there. Uh, if I could change one thing in my past, what would it be? I tried to think about that and you know, I'm sure there's lots of things that would change, but it all kind of gives you life experience. There's obviously things that would change, but um, as, a, as a whole, I've, I'm pretty happy with my life and the direction it's gone and actually more happy than I thought I would be. And, you know, obviously I would like slow down and enjoy probably those years with my kids being little and just not be overwhelmed <clears throat> or stressed by it and just because you know there's always those always stressful when they're little but now looking back like those years were and I knew they were at the time but they were just so precious and yeah like you can't go back you can't relive them you can't do things better or whatever I would just I think I would just slow down and enjoy the moment more because it, before you know it it's gone and I probably need to I definitely need to do that now it's, it's what I'm learning as I'm getting older slow down and enjoy the moment because the moments don't last and then last but not least and I'm gonna try to make this fast I had a couple questions about like faith faith-based questions um, someone said I struggle with anxiety and troubles and question questions to God I know he should be the first that I turn to because I feel the need but it's hard for me because I feel the need to be in control and, and, and it's difficult. Any advice or wisdom? My heart knows the truth, but my brain struggles. And yes, girl, we have all been there. We have all been there. We are human and we live in a fallen world. And um, definitely, I think there's, there's so many misconceptions about God. And one of those misconceptions is that either, number one, he's too busy for, for us. He's got too much going on that he can't really... He doesn't really have time for us or that he's angry at us, you know, because we've screwed up so much. He's just got to be up there just folding his arms and just like striking people with, with lightning. But there's nothing that could be further from the truth. He is our father who um, made us in his image. In all of creation, there's nothing more important to his heart than humans. We are made in his image. Nothing else is made in his image. Um, so we are his image bearers as Christians and he wants nothing more than for us to come as we are just he's that's why the Bible says it doesn't he doesn't want us to wait until everything is fixed and we got our life together and we feel like we're doing good and then we come to him because he already knows everything anyway so he wants us to come as we are he wants us to climb up in his lap he wants uh, just like a good father he wants to put his arms around us and just 
have us pour out our heart because he knows it all anyway, <laughs> first of all, and he is such a loving God. God is love. God is not angry. Um, yes, God gets angry. He gets angry at sin. He hates sin, but he loves us so much. And that's why he offers his son to us as a, as a sacrifice for, uh, for us. He, if you have accepted Jesus into your heart as a, as a believer, I believe that, um, Jesus, God sent his son, Jesus to die on the cross to shed his blood to forgive our sins and then he rose again on the third day and now he lives in heaven with God and one day Jesus is going to come back and take the Christians to heaven we're going to live there forever and I believe that when you die if you've received Jesus as your savior you get to spend eternity in heaven with God in paradise and if you don't believe on Jesus as your savior then you will not be able to enter into heaven because the Bible says that no man comes to the father except through the son so um the only way is through Jesus Christ. So if you have a need to be in control, and I'm kind of like that too, just know that like, there's nothing you could bring to God that he can't handle, nothing. Nothing in this teeny tiny little world is too big for the God of creation. So, and he like is very present in our time of need. He's very much there with you, beside you. He wants you to pour your heart out to him and he wants to just give you peace and hope. He wants you to lay it down at his feet and just have the freedom of knowing that he's going to take care of it. So it's a daily thing. Sometimes it's an hourly thing, like just surrendering your heart, surrendering your anxieties all those things just surrender them just constantly surrender them to god just lay them at his feet and don't take them back just say i'm going to give it to you and i know you're going to take care of it just give me peace give me joy and i'm going to live my life knowing that you're in control and i trust you fully and i don't want to be cliche or anything but that is truly the only way that i can get through life is to lay my anxieties my fears my everything like constantly I'm having to do that um, just put it in his hands and trust him trust him fully because he is more than capable of taking care of it so someone said what would I do if there was no Jesus although she knows she and I both believe there is a Jesus obviously I wouldn't even be here if there wasn't a Jesus but I have no idea how to really answer that because I mean I've been saved since I was a little girl and I just have grown up knowing there's Jesus and he loves me and and he wants a relationship with me and um, yes, like that would, that's so foreign to me to not, not think that there is a Jesus. So yeah, I don't know what I would do. Obviously I, I would not be, um, going to spend eternity with him. So someone said, do I ever, um, have I ever had like a bad week and I feel like I'm backsliding. And I just think that as human beings, we, we get so discouraged and it's this, we have to recognize it as the devil. The, the enemy is the devil. It's not people and it's not. It's just the, the devil is the one that makes you feel shame and guilt. And he's the one pointing the finger at you and saying shame on you for what you did. And then you just fell further and further away from God. And, and then you, I think so many people get to the point where they don't, like they don't think that they can come and bring it because they've gotten too far away or they've done too many things. But that's the beauty of, of God. He says, come as you are. Like, bring it all to me. I want all of it. I want all of you. I don't just want you when you're cleaned up and fixed up and you look nice. I want all of you. I love you. I created you. I'm your father. Come to me when you're, when you're, when you feel like you're backsliding, just come to me like right then. Don't wait. Don't wait until you get everything fixed. That's a lie of the devil. He wants to keep you trapped and he wants me to feel guilt and shame and those are lies of the enemy. Just recognize the lies of the enemy because God wants to give you freedom. The Christian life is about freedom and peace and hope and true, true joy. The Christian life is not about regulations and strict rules and just, you know, that those are all from the devil. True Christianity is freedom and joy and hope and it doesn't come from anywhere else. It really does not come from anywhere else. If you're having a bad week and you feel like everything's going wrong or you're backsliding, you're getting away from God, then now, right now is the time to come back and say, God, I'm coming back. I'm gonna recommit. And you know what? He's gonna open you with, he's gonna welcome you with open arms every single time. He's the God of a million chances. He'll never turn you away when you come to him, never. So the last question was, what is my favorite Bible verse? And Honestly, I know this is probably terrible, but like I don't have 
a favorite <laughs> i like so many and then people will say what's your life first what's your favorite verse people always ask you that and it's like you feel kind of bad because you don't have a favorite i mean you have so many favorite but one that i always think of that i that i that was imprinted on my heart when i was about i don't know when i was a young young 20s was ephesians 4 29 do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen. And that is something that I have to remind myself of constantly, especially, you know, on YouTube. In real life, though, too, like, don't let anything come out of your mouth that's not helpful for building others up according to their needs that it may benefit them. So um, that is not my instinct to do that always. So it's, it's a reminder. To, to constantly be watching the words that come out of my mouth. We have so much power in our words and they can really hurt people and they can really help people. So anyway, thank you so much. I know this has gone on forever and I hopefully you stayed with me. Hopefully it wasn't boring, but um, I love you guys and I appreciate all your comments, all your questions. Um, so I hope that you'll keep watching and keep following us along with us. I do, um, like I said, I plan to do Vlogtober and I have some fun house projects still on my radar and, you know, grandbaby's coming, maybe another wedding eventually, you know, just lots of things happening. So I hope that you'll stick around. If you're not already subscribed, you probably are if you're watching this, but I hope that you will consider subscribing if you haven't already. I appreciate you more than you realize and you're helping to make my dream come true of having this wonderful, amazing outlet, creative outlet to actually, you know support my family and you know be able to stay home with them and do the things I love so I hope that I've been an encouragement to you today I hope that this video has given you some joy make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I will see you all in my next one bye bye